Viewer discretion is advised. So Arthur Connolly was a well-known British intelligence officer. Arthur Conan Doyle. (laughs) Explorer and writer in the mid-1800s. He was captain of the 6th Bengal Light Cavalry, working in service of the British East India Company. Not great. Mm. And in this role, he completed numerous reconnaissance missions into Central Asia. So think all of, like, the stands. Mm. Yeah. All the stands. (laughs) All the stands. (laughs) He often traveled in disguise using the name Khan Ali, which Mm. was like a play on words that sounded like his name, Connolly. Connolly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he thought he was really clever. I mean, I would have been very proud of coming up with that, too. (laughs) I mean, that's what a lot of like English to Chinese translations. Right. Like Zach's Chinese name was Kong Zili, which Mm -hmm. was like supposed to be like his last name, Cohen and Zachary. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so although it would later be popularized in... Uh, the Richard Kipling novel, Kim, Connolly was actually the person who coined the phrase the great game, which describes like the competing efforts, excuse me, of the Russian and British empires trying to gain control over Central Asia, Mm -hmm. which like still exists today. Mm And like the US versus Russia, like trying to gain control over Afghanistan, Mm. eh, kind of. Anyway, it's fine. Oh, great. Got it. So, Most people would say that this game began in 1837 when Queen Victoria took the throne and Britain began establishing more of a colonial presence in India. So, like, Brits were already in India for decades, if maybe even a century, but, like, they started to try to really take over more control and, like, wrest power away from local leaders. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Connolly himself played a major role in the great game by helping to overthrow an Afghan monarch and install a king who had agreed to align his country's policies with Britain's interests. Okay. After this success, Connolly became a go-to man for missions to spread Britain's influence around the world. One such mission was actually something of a rescue mission. And we will get to how horribly it turned out. Oh, God. He was sent to attempt to free a British diplomat named Charles Stoddart, who was being held against his will in Bukhara, which was an ancient city that is now part of present day Uzbekistan. And there are photos on the drive of Bukhara. Very cool looking place Mm -hmm. that I had absolutely never heard of. Uh, So... Stoddart, the one that he that Connolly is trying to rescue, mm-hmm. had been sent to Bukhara three years earlier to gain an audience with the emir. The emir's name was Nasrullah Khan, and um, he was trying to deliver a letter of reassurance that Britain had no intention of invading mm. Bukhara. Famous last words. <laughs> even though they had literally just invaded Afghanistan, Mm -hmm. which is neighboring, and, like, we're taking over. But you're fine. Yeah. Right. (laughs) We're not coming over there. You're good. Why would you worry at all? Just, like, everybody chill. Yeah. And just because we took over the country next to yours doesn't mean that you're at any risk. So, like, probably you should drop your defenses. Yeah. Like, give everybody the day off. It's fine. Relax. (laughs) Just relax. (laughs) Don't be so hysterical. God. (laughs) Um, He also was sent to try to attempt the emir to free several Russian prisoners that he was already holding. So we've got one guy going to try to get prisoners freed, and then he becomes a prisoner, and then another guy going to set Mm -hmm. that guy free. Mm -hmm. So the second part of this mission might sound, like, confusing because Britain was fighting for control and power against the Russians and then this British guy is sent to free Russian prisoners Mm -hmm. but actually strategically there was a purpose so he was trying to free the Russian prisoners so that Russia wouldn't have a pretext to invade Bukhara and then 
Russia would lay off and then Britain would have more influence in Bukhara long term. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. It doesn't really matter. What matters is the guy that was sent, Stoddart, the first guy sent, was not the right man for this job. Oh, dear. So the mission required a delicate touch. Okay. And as one of Stoddart's acquaintances would later remark, quote, to attack or defend a fortress, no better man than Stoddart can be found. I but for a, I'm just trying to be as voice. blustery as I possibly can be. I <laughs> <hate> <laughs> <it>. <laughs> 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 but for a diplomatic mission requiring coolness and self command, <laughs> a man less adapted to the purpose could not readily have been met with. Wow. So basically he was a fucking hothead and they sent him on a diplomatic mission to a foreign country with an all-powerful despot leader who could give two fucks about this guy. Right. Got it. It didn't go great. So upon his arrival to Bukhara in December of 1838, Stoddart was immediately, or he immediately committed several diplomatic faux pas. To begin with, he rode through the main square of the walled city in front of the emir's castle on horseback rather than walking, which was strictly forbidden Mm. because nobody else is supposed to be on horseback within the city other than the emir. Okay. And like if he had just had like a local guide, they could have told him this. Right. Like if he had just done – the bare minimum of diplomatic <laughs> research. Due diligence, yeah. He's a guy. yeah. Furthermore, when the emir himself rode out on horseback, uh, the rules of the emirate, as he, had he been aware of them, would have made clear that he was supposed to immediately dismount his own horse. Because again, only the emir can be on horseback right. in front of other people. But instead, Stoddart remained in his saddle and saluted the emir, which was the custom in Britain. Mm-hmm. So he just was like assuming that his culture was right. going to carry the monoculture and-, mm-hmm. and the right way to do things in this other guy's fucking land. Mm-hmm. Finally, Stoddart arrived with no gift for the leader, which was also a deep insult. And, like, the basics of diplomacy. Right. Bring a gift. It's the basics of, like, attending a a house party. Yeah. Even I know this. You bring a wink wine. Yep. Just grab some extra wine. It's not that hard. Out of the cupboard. Always have extra wine on hand. Mm Mm-hmm. (laughs) Trywink.com forward slash gals. But do it. (laughs) <laughs> so, according to a written account of this initial meeting, the emir, quote, looked at Stoddart fixedly for some time and then passed on without saying a word. <laughs> Just like a withering gaze and then Ooh. walked away. I love a withering gaze. Mm. Yikes. And things did not get better from there. You don't say it. So when Stoddart finally did gain an audience with Nasrullah and handed him a letter of introduction and a statement of the purpose of his visit, the emir immediately took note of the fact that this letter had not been signed by Queen Victoria herself Mm -hmm. and was again deeply insulted because he's like, I'm the fucking king of the world, basically. And kings, you know, interact with fellow People at their level. Mm -hmm, So mm -hmm. I should be getting a letter from your queen, not Mm -hmm. from you random ass fucking lowly diplomat guy. Mm -hmm. I'd be pissed too. Right? Yeah. It's like when you show up and they're like, oh, no, I'm so-and-so's assistant. Right. But I will will share the message. I will take detailed notes. Yeah, I'll forward that email on your behalf. Right. Um, So by all accounts, Stoddart was just massively underprepared for this mission slash not prepared at all Mm -hmm. and like deeply naive Mm -hmm. about the danger that he was walking into. He thought he would just stroll in there because he was British and like get all these people freed. The Mm. confidence of a mediocre white man. Yeah, always. 
So had he done a bit more research on Nasrullah Khan, whose nickname was The Butcher. Okay. It might have been enough to make him proceed with greater caution. Nasrullah's official title, quote, The Shadow of God Upon Earth. Incredible. Okay. Did not provide much reassurance either. So basically, it's like <laughs> that's such a that's so gross. Isn't I hate that it. like the that's most really scary? Epic movie. I don't yeah. like it. It's it gives it gives me my chills. next rabbit. The shadow. Oh, this is shadow my honey. The shadow, shadow of God, God upon Earth. Earth. We call him Shadow for short. Shad. Shad. <laughs> oh my God, my friend Shad. I'm gonna. Oh, oh Shad. What's that Ab- short for? It's so short Shadow of God upon Earth. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm yes, texting yes, him. Yes. Oh, right now. Please do. That is epic. <laughs> so this Emir Nasrullah had ascended to the throne in 1826 after ordering the murder of his own father and his two older brothers. NBD. They were in the way. They were. (laughs) They literally were. They were in the way. They were moving anyway. (laughs) Were they, though? That's a legit excuse. And then after he became the emir, after doing this violent coup, like killing everybody that was in front of him in line... Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Then just to be safe, he also had his three younger brothers and like a bunch of other relatives that could possibly make a claim to the throne killed well, yeah. as well. So he killed his entire, like every male in his family. Basically. Got to. Wipe out the competition, baby. Which Go Shad. Actually a very common thing also in like the Ottoman Empire. Absolutely. Like a lot of like sultans would just like kill all of the men. Yeah, yeah. Basically take out anybody who could be competition for the throne. Right. Praying I'm Manta here for style. it. And then that buys you like 18 years of calm mm, until your sons it. start to get right. old enough. Anyway. So he was also an infamously cruel leader. And one of his claims to fame was a 21 foot deep pit Covered by an iron grill. Oh, God. And accessible only by rope. And this was within the prison compound behind his palace. So in Oubliette. Ooh. Has anybody here watched Ozark on Netflix? Okay. I'm not caught up, though. No, I haven't started. I know I need to. It's so good. But it's really good. We've got a pit. We've got torture. We've got sound. Yep. I like ramen hair. Yeah. The girl with the ramen hair. Yeah, she's good. Yes. Ramen hair. <laughs> yeah. Her hair looks like ramen in that Young show. Young Justin I'm Timberlake. Sorry. I yeah. know it's supposed to. <laughs> it's gonna be May hair. <laughs> it's gonna be May. <laughs> so okay, his subjects referred to the pit as Sia Cha, which see ya later. Yes, <laughs> Cha. See ya. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cha. Put tra- in the pit. <laughs> Cha. You're in the pit. Cha. <laughs> Cha, you'll be fine. (laughs) (laughs) Which trans? Cha, 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 (laughs) bye. Which translates to black well or black hole? Oh, fun! I love that. So I really love that. (laughs) Anyone who displeased Nasrullah was at risk of being thrown into this pit, which would have been unpleasant enough on its own, but it gets. So much worse. I need a pit that I can throw people in who displease me. Right? Okay, Buffalo Jill. Listen, (laughs) I do have really deep egress window wells. I should start making my pit. Yeah. (laughs) People are just going to fall into your pit. New yard project. (laughs) Building my pit. Do I need a permit to build a pit in my backyard? (laughs) Not even a little bit. Just check for electricity lines. I yeah, won't. call before you dig. <laughs> never, <laughs> never call before you dig your pit. So it raises way too many questions. <laughs> we get so many flyers about call before you dig. It's I like know, the right? one thing the government really cares about. And never once <laughs> like, have like I COVID done it. COVID, who I've never <laughs> dug before you, you dig. dig. I have never dug. No, <laughs> I know. 
I literally get like a flyer like once a month about Call Before You Dig. <laughs> I know. They're all sponsored by Mike Rowe, too. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> all right. Okay. So Nasrullah also ordered that the pit be kept stocked with a variety of rodents, Snacks. scorpions. Oh, and other stinging insects. <laughs> Did no. you say snacks? Snacks. <laughs> snacks for the rodents, a which are people. Stocked pit. Yeah. <laughs> actually, he did actually keep it stocked with snacks for the rodents, and we will get to it. Well. So the practice of using insects as torture devices likely dates back to ancient Persia and has been practiced around the world. Oh, my God. But Nasrullah seems to have been one of history's most enthusiastic practitioners of this method. (laughs) Oh, it's bad. He carefully selected the insects that would induce maximum pain, but not death. Scorpions and things that sting. Including one called the assassin bug. No. (laughs) I haven't seen that on my island. Mm. (laughs) The assassin bug is notable for its thick curved beak. It would catch a pretty price at the market on the island. Ish. Are you (laughs) sick, brothers? Timmy and Tommy will pay a pretty penny. (laughs) (laughs) This is Animal Crossing. Yes. Yes. Okay. (laughs) Add that to the list. Alphabetically, okay. it's up there. It's early oh, on. Guys. <laughs> <sighs> okay. With this like the height of is the my early, favorite face of Kenyans. Of early COVID lockdown, <laughs> I was playing so much Animal Crossing, and this was before Bill and I like so moved in much. together. And I was at his house, and I was playing it in bed. And he's just like quietly, I don't know, like watching TV, doing whatever. And I caught a water bug, and without even explaining anything, I literally <laughs> yelled, this will fetch a pretty price at the market in the morning. <laughs> and Bill was like, what the fuck are you talking And he still moved this in with you. This will fetch a pretty price. And then we bought a house together, so it's <laughs> This shall fetch a pretty price at market in the morning. What is is it shop British? Box? Do people oh, have accents? Bag? No, oh. it's just Amanda. It's actually uh, Japanese. That's... Yeah, I just was taken over by a spirit. Okay. Spirit. <laughs> okay. Back to the assassin bug, oh, which right. there are pictures Love. on the drive, but I don't know if it's the same. Ooh. I feel like other bugs over the years have been given that moniker, so I don't know if I'm good. I'm charging my mouse anyway, so I will not be going to the drive. <laughs> I will be. Great. So this assassin bug that we're talking about is notable for its thick curved beak used for piercing its prey and injecting a toxic saliva that paralyzes and kills other insects and contains an enzyme that liquefies the innards of prey so that the assassin bug can then (laughs) suck the liquid out. <laughs> Good. It's like evolution is it's amazing. It's like Ebola and a venomous thing in one. I feel okay, like so bugs. When, mm. Go ahead. When this bug bites a person, because people are big, right? No I assume way it that only happened. liquefies lo- a localized Correct. little spot. Yeah, and mm-hmm. like nec- probably necrotizes the tissue, and then the Eggs. bug. Okay. Exactly. I was just going to say, I feel like bugs have such, like, intense, evil superpowers because they're all, like, this big. they're tiny. Yeah, they're tiny. Yeah, yeah, this is the way they eat. And also, in answer to your question, Amanda, about Animal Crossing, I would say that this most closely resembles the violin beetle, but it's Uh, it's not. Okay, okay, okay. Because it doesn't have the long, you know. Okay. (laughs) So, exactly like Amanda said, she knows. Um, she knows. These insects don't typically target humans mm-hmm. because they want to just like kill another bug that's right. like a good size for them. Have for their a bug eat a human and then leave. Suck out yeah. the innards and yeah. then move on with their day. Yep, yep. Um, but when deprived of their typical food sources, they will feed on any live tissue. Oh, great. Oh. So their sting has been compared to being pierced with a hot needle. Oh. Uh. And the enzyme that they inject causes separating pores. Mm. <coughs> so yeah, basically, yes, it'll Separate. it'll cause 
a little spot. Don't Google to that. Die on oh. your body to fester to undergo the formation of pus. Yeah, mm -hmm. and pus and liquefy, and then it'll suck out from that spot. And then when it's hungry again, it'll just find a new spot. God, nature is amazing. Nope. Oh. Yep. So Nasrullah made sure that the pit's inhabitants were well fed on chunks of raw meat, snacks, oh, mm -hmm. oh, God. when there was no human prisoner for them to feast on. Ooh, but expand their tummies. Get them nice and hungry. Get them used to, like, Chunks of meat yeah. instead of other bugs. <laughs> yeah. This and, is insane. Yeah. And uh, don't worry, there was usually a prisoner for them to feast on because he was very easily displeased. Mm. I mean, same. Yeah. And so this became the naive Stoddart's fate for yeah. offending the emir. <laughs> for riding his, a this horse. This is his new apartment. Instead of walking. <laughs> you fucking yeah. idiot. You fucking idiot. It could have been so easy. If you had just Googled it yeah. before you arrived. <laughs> Talk to anyone. Uh, any person. Oh, no. So before Connolly was sent to free Stoddart, Stoddart spent three years oh. as Nasrullah's prisoner. In the pit? Cycling through phases of being in the leader's favor and treated comparatively well and like a guest. Not an honored guest, but a guest. And then doing something to cause offense. And then he'd get thrown back in the bug pit, which is honestly worse than being in the bug pit Consistently, right? Yeah, for yeah. getting years. that little bit well, of they recovery. Get hungry. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but then then you're always afraid that you're going to be right. thrown back in the pit, mm -hmm. and you would be. Mm -hmm. I mean, Nasrilla knew what he was doing. He fucking yeah. knew exactly what he was doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Sometimes Stoddart was thrown into the pit not because of anything he himself had done but because Nasrullah was upset by some action that the British Empire had taken. Oh, oh yeah. no. And as the <laughs> diplomat, he was sent to the pit. Oh, oh God. Can you imagine living your life where just at any, any moment, at any moment, you could be dragged into the pit. We would all, as Americans, we would <laughs> always be in the pit. Oh, can you imagine oh. trying you to imagine survive this during the Trump going administration? From Obama to Trump. Oh no! <laughs> yes. You know what? Just put me in the pit. You're I'm just done. like how did how did how did the how did Tuesday in November go? How's mm. how's that election? <laughs> did everybody vote? Did the millennials vote? Did Gen Z vote? Did they? Only forty percent of the population voted. <laughs> okay. Okay, I've given <laughs> most most of my separating sores from last time have healed up. <laughs> I'm ready to go back in the pit. Yeah. So uh, the British <laughs> Shad liked my suggestion, by the way. Yes. Of course. Of Shad being short for in the shadow of, of God upon right. Earth. Right. Yeah. yeah. So the British did kind of the bare minimum to try to get Stoddart out during these three years. So they sent several letters attempting to get his release, but because none of them were signed by the queen, mm. the emir ignored them all. Mm -hmm. The ant queen? No, the queen of England. The queen, queen of, Victoria. What if it had to be signed by, like, the bug queen? <laughs> She's <laughs> like, my people aren't done with you yet. <laughs> so Stoddard himself was occasionally allowed to write letters, and in one... Um, sent to Connolly shortly before his arrival, he wrote, the favor of the emir is increased in these days towards me. I believe you will be treated well here, which is like totally a hostage letter. Mm -hmm. I am being treated very well. Yeah. Come here. <laughs> You'll love it. <laughs> so Stoddart, according to one source, Quote, had an incomprehensible lack of political judgment. <laughs> yeah, you don't say. <laughs> but he can't be faulted for a shortage of optimism. I End mean. quote. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of a burn, though. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's the point. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. It's a very oh, no. British insult. Mm -hmm. yeah, it is. <laughs> 
So at first, he seemed he might be right. So upon Connolly's arrival, both men were treated fairly well. Connolly had, like, done the bare minimum of research and didn't, like, immediately offend the emir. (laughs) But unfortunately for them, Britain soon suffered a catastrophic strategic loss in Afghanistan, and the king that Connolly had helped install there was overthrown. Mm. And so Nasrullah surmised from this that Britain was no longer a military threat to him because he was like, well, they just lost next door. So, like, how powerful can they be? Fuck them. And so he had even less of a reason to treat the diplomats well. And also he had suffered zero consequences from throwing this guy in the bug pit for three years. Yeah. Uh, Why would I change? Whatever. Bug pit. This is working out really well. No notes. So in addition, tensions began heightening between Bukhara and its neighbors, and Nasrullah blamed Connolly, who had been traveling in the area and had visited some of his enemies before Mm -hmm. showing up. Mm -hmm. And he was like, well, you instigated these conflicts, which is Mm -hmm. probably not true, but whatever. He was kind of the scapegoat. And so the final straw for Nasrullah came when he learned that a recent letter he had sent to Queen Victoria had instead been answered by the governor general of India. And he was like, I am fucking over you guys. Yeah. Like, I am the emir. Mm-hmm. I wrote a letter to the fucking queen. The she queen's didn't gotta even write me get back. it. Yeah. She left me on red. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so enraged at the British Empire, Nasrullah turned his ire on the two diplomats. Both men were thrown back into the bug pit. Oh, God. Where they spent the better part of the next year. No. Having the flesh slowly gnawed off their bodies. Oh, oh my, my God. God. This pant. With few this periods pant, of reprieve. This pant. <laughs> it's criminal. It's unlovable. <laughs> God. It's entomological. <laughs> so it's then- full of bugs. It's full of bugs. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. It totally sucks. It's oh, terrible. terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so then in November of 1842, rumors began to make their way home to Britain that Connolly and Stoddart had been executed. A group of friends of the two men began collecting money to fund an expedition to find out their fates once and for all. I would have not have gone. <laughs> a volunteer. No, no fakes. If Free the two of you vacay. disappeared in like a foreign country under weird circumstances, like there you might have been a bug you... pit involved. I, yeah. I'm sorry, R.I.P. Sorry. Yeah, no, you count yeah. your losses, let it go. Yeah. Well, at some point, I'll make yeah. new friends. I get it. <laughs> you won't, but that's fine. You don't need friends. I'll you be have fine. plenty of backups in I will Iowa. be fine You're with good. not making new friends. Yeah, you'll fine. be fine. So a man named Joseph Wolfe, an Anglican priest, was chosen to make this journey to Bukhara because, again, British fucking cultural blinders, they thought, like, well, he's an Anglican priest, so they have to respect him. Mm -hmm. But, like, that means fucking nothing. Yeah, Mm -hmm. to to this culture of people. Yeah. But unlike Stoddart, he fully understood the danger of his mission and did as much research as he could on the emir and on Bukhara's local customs before he showed up. Having learned that a visitor was expected to bow three times upon meeting the emir while saying in Arabic, peace be to the king, he memorized this phrase and did exactly that. And in fact, he was so nervous that he bowed continuously, like more than three times, and just kept repeating the phrase until the emir <laughs> laughed and told him to stop. And laughed and told him to get in the pit. <laughs> it was just like, you know what? I'm just, I, three doesn't, you know what? Three doesn't seem like enough. I'm just gonna, it's like Parmesan, you just tell me when. Uh huh. <laughs> Uh, I would do the same thing. Absolutely. You have to peel me off the ground from my bow. Mm hmm. Well, <laughs> yeah, right. Your back would start to act That's up. That's true. <laughs> I'm, ba- I'm bowing in, in my mind. I'm bowing yeah. to you. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Wolf made a good enough impression on the mercurial leader that he was given permission to meet with Bukhara's commander of the artillery, who had also been Stoddart and Connolly's jailer, and to receive a firsthand account of their fates. So the commander described to Wolf how Connolly and Stoddart had spent two full months in the bug pit until, quote, 
masses of their flesh had been gnawed off their bones. No, nope. no. Nope. Also, like infection. Oh yeah, the the fact that they survived is actually fucking incredible. Eventually, Nasrullah had ordered the men be removed from the pit and beheaded, making oh, a point to explain how relief. their execution Seriously. would be more humane than those carried out in neighboring kingdoms because, quote, strangling gives more pain and the rascal Khan of Kiva strangles his people mm. and therefore out of mercy... I command the heads of the evildoers to be cut off with a common knife. I would mm-hmm. rather that have happened from the well, beginning. Years earlier, mm-hmm. before the bugs. Mm-hmm. Pre bug. Yeah. But this idea of like beheading being an easier form of execution than like hanging right. or some other form carried on into like. Tudor fucking England. Like, that's mm-hmm. why Anne Boleyn was beheaded and mm-hmm. not hanged. Well, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, in a lot of – it, probably most circumstances it was because being hanged, as we know – Can take a while. Yeah. Can take a while. That in itself is a form of torture. Mm-hmm. Right. That's why a lot of people – so one other thing that I read in my torture notes, instead of hanging, like, regularly, like, your feet down, mm-hmm. they – built this contraption that actually like shot you up in the air. Ugh. It was like reverse hanging. Oh my god. It was like and it was um, supposed to kill you faster but it super did not. Like that a bungee jumping almost. Horrible. Yeah. It's like a yeah. Opposite Ugh. hanging. Also we didn't have time to like get to it but like what Lucy said about the scaphism like is also rumored to have happened but there's less evidence of that but like the milk and honey and then yeah. the oh. diarrhea, and then the bugs. The bugs. Yeah. Yeah. No. Mm-mm. And so Connolly and Stoddart's horrifying ordeal came to an end on June 4th, 1842, when they were beheaded in the public square. The official charge against them was spying for the British Empire. And the Anglican guy g- got the news and got out of there mm-hmm. alive. Bye bye. Yeah. To oh, okay. Pit. Great. He bowed his yep. whole way out. He was like, yes, very gotta merciful. Go, gotta go. Great, great bye, call. Bye, bye. You did the right thing, Amir. <laughs> gotta go. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. I forgot I have, ta- horse, I have a task uh, rabbit coming. I'm so I sorry. Will, I'm so I, sorry. I, I, I left, left the oven horse. on. Left the oven on. <laughs> gotta go. <laughs> exactly. And that is my case. Hate it. Wow. Love it. Gross. Love it. Horrible. Thank you. Hate it. Really yeah. bad. Really bad. Really bad. Really bad stuff. Well, I sure hope you liked that clip. If you did like that clip, make sure you are subscribing to our YouTube channel, leaving us a nice review, and joining us on Patreon for even more video content, audio content, salacious content all around. Come join us. Treat yourself.